Well, it's profile time on the uh, football ramble. My yes. favourite bit. <laughs> we like this, don't we? People we love do. it. Yeah. I laugh at us. specifically. Yeah. Yeah. And if anybody wants to listen, that's, that's great as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, the show is more fun when no one listens. I'm so. pleased, yeah. actually, because uh, this, this play links in quite well from the opening question. Go for it. <laughs> what, about 40 minutes later? About 40 yeah. minutes later. Today's profile is on Eric. Daniel Pierre Cantona. Oh, brilliant. Oh, nice. Yeah, I think hey. that. You can't get Round much. of applause at the off. <laughs> oh, really? It's, that's not protocol. <laughs> Should we do it? I'm happy to do well, it. Yeah, well, let's bend the rules. Okay. Eric. It's a bit of a Man United love him, though, isn't it? it no, is, no, 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 no. You see, that's the thing. Even those who hate Man U can differentiate the two. Okay. Mm. You know? He was born Differentiate isn't the word I would use, but... Okay. Some kind of swear word, probably. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Matt. Uh, absolutely Matt. <laughs> born May 24th, 1966. You know, he's 42. He's only 42 still, Cantona. Do you remember those adverts? 1966 was a good year for English football. Eric Cantona was born. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's good. Quality. Um, well, where, where do we begin? Let's start at the beginning. Why not? Auxerre was his first club. He was, born in, he was born in Paris, incidentally. He grew up in Marseille. Okay. Um, but his first club was, um, was Auxerre. Um, he played 81 games. Now, Cantona, I'll, I'll say this straight away, because we like the goals-to-game yeah. ratio. He's not... Yeah, he, yeah. He's never been prolific in that, in that region. No. But um, he's played 81 games and got 23 goals for Auxerre. Okay. But it's not too bad. There's a little... How many fans did he kick in the face? Um, what do you need for this sort of thing? What are not... When they're not a prolific scorer, what you need is those stats you get on Championship Manager, hmm. like man of the match, assists, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yellow cards, all that, all that sort of shit, yeah. you know, average rating. Yeah. You need that. Yeah, I, I've got all that, but I'll probably yeah. edit it out. Yeah, fair enough. Um, in, uh, in 1984, his footballing career was put on hold because he did national service in France. So you have to do that? Yeah, he did. Um, um, so I thought that was, that was quite interesting. But it, um, the, the naughtiness started quite early on with Cantona. Um, he uh, was playing for Auxerre in, in 86. Um, his, his performances caught the eye and he got his first full French cap. Um, but uh, in 1987, only a year later, his disciplinary problems uh, began and uh, he was heavily fined for punching uh, teammate Bruno Martini in the face. <laughs> what, was you in a game? Uh, I did. I, I, That's I, awesome. I, my research only goes so far. Okay, but yeah, I yeah. feel it doesn't need to go any further. No, fair enough. Um, Again, the, the next year he was in he was in trouble because uh, he did a big a big tackle on a. Uh, on a, on a I've seen that tackle. It's a massive two foot. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, three game suspension, um, and and he was threatened to be taken off the national team. Um, but uh, but he kept later he was he was in the French under twenty one side, and they won the um, eighty eight European Championships under twenty one championships. No mean feat. Uh, for, uh, Shortly after that, went to Marseille for um, a French record fee. And that was a team he supported as a boy because he grew up in Marseille. Okay. Mm. How much was it? Uh, it doesn't really matter, does okay, it? Fair enough. You don't know, do you? No. <laughs> <laughs> Your research only goes so far. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. I only get the important stuff. Yeah. Um, again, 1989, a year later, um, this was a, get a friendly game against Torpedo Moscow. He, um, he kicked the ball at the crowd and ripped his uh, jersey off. Um, <laughs> because he was substituted oh, in a friendly nice. match. That's nice. Man. <laughs> I love that. You don't like, get players like that anymore. Yeah. Exactly. The club banned him for a month. I like um, to think the game was going on and he seen yeah. he was going to get subbed and just smack the ball yeah. being on it. <laughs> yeah. But um, the funny thing was, that a, a couple of months earlier from that, he was banned from international matches for a year after insulting the national coach on TV. Nice. If you're going to do it, you go. You're a national. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, what year did he come to uh, England? Uh, well, um, again, there was some more incident um, incidents. Um, sort of ferry over. This is quite. <laughs> a, yeah. yeah, that's right. Which is quite an interesting one. It, it, when he went to to Montpellier, um, where he, he played 33 games and scored 10 goals, he um, he was involved uh, with with another fight um, through his boots at a teammate's face and so on. And Jesus, this incident led to six players demanding that he was sacked from the club. But <laughs> but listen to this: Lauren Blanc, who was there, and Carlos Valderrama, oh, yeah. nonetheless, um, supported him and yeah. said, "No, we've got to keep this guy." And 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 they kept him. Um, and they went on to win win the French Cup. And uh, he was quite instrumental. He was quite instrumental in, in winning the French Cup with him. 
So um, we move on again. More disciplinary stuff in 1991. He threw a ball at the referee. <laughs> <laughs> it's life. It's just been one long disciplinary. Yeah. yeah. But, but, this, but this, this, this is quite a good one, though. He, he was summoned to a disciplinary, a disciplinary hearing um, by the French Football uh, Federation, banned for a month. Um, it, while he was at this hearing, he responded by walking up to each member of the hearing uh, committee and in turn calling each one an idiot. <laughs> It makes Joe Barton's life look like an episode of The Good Life, doesn't yeah. it? Well, yeah, I mean, it, it, his ban was increased to three months, as you can imagine. Yeah. Idiot, idiot, idiot. Right, three months. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and he announced his retirement from football in December 91. <laughs> How old? 25. Well, he was brilliant. 91, it, so yeah. 25, that's amazing. I love it when people do that. <laughs> yeah, well, Michel Platini was French coach at the time, and he was a fan of Cantona, because obviously a bloke of talent, you know. Um, and he persuaded him to, to reverse his decision of retirement. And on the advice of Gerard Houllier, he moved to England yeah. to, um, to get his career. Back to on Leeds? Track. It was to Leeds, as we turn the page. Yeah, you got a massive file on Monsieur well, Cantona. Yeah, but this is Cantona, yeah, isn't it? Enough, yeah, he signed. Um, he won the league with Leeds, but he was, he was not that a predominant figure for him. Okay. Um, he was more of a substitute. But then, in 1992... He signed for Manchester United for £1.2 million. I thought he'd featured quite heavily for Leeds. Not that outside. much. He'd, he'd, fe- he'd featured a bit, but I, I don't think he'd featured as much as people think. Well, there was talk of some sort of... Um, like He didn't get on with... The, surprisingly, he didn't get on with a few other players at Leeds. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure if it was Wilkinson at the club at the time, which I think it was, we were sort of told to give him sort of short shrift and get rid of him, get him out, whatever it took. Because yeah. he was causing a lot of damage, and, and I think they wanted to... Um, Really kick on the next year, so That's right, obviously yeah. Ferguson thought I couldn't look after him, so I'll, I'll take him. One point two mil, mm. you just said, wouldn't you? Yeah. Do you know what, we've That's got to be a God, how much would he be these days? Wow, well, mm. you can't even begin to. Imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, <laughs> I love this. When he was playing for Man U, you know, he actually lived in a semi-detached house. Um, <laughs> because he didn't need a big So house. you know where he lived But you don't know how much he cost <laughs> Hang on, I never said where he lived <laughs> yeah. uh, In the town of Boothstown But um, <laughs> no, he, uh, he lived in a semi Because he didn't want a big house Or the trappings of wealth he said yeah. um, we got I bet he didn't put it like that I bet he sort of went When I am going home I see <laughs> the seagulls They Mock me. <laughs> yeah. then I, I need to live. If you were a Crystal Palace fan, <laughs> yeah. I would kick your face. <laughs> yeah. Well, talking about well, something kick. like that. 120 hours community service and obviously a worldwide ban of football from January what? to September. Is that when he kicked that back? Like, I'd like to do a feature ball. called Footballers Go Fucking Postal. <laughs> where <laughs> What did the guy, the Palace fan, what was his name? Michael someone. Oh, I forget his name yeah. now. He called him, what did he call him? Did fuck he off back to France or something, or something like, that. like that. I think he just said something like, fuck off back to France or something. I don't think it was that bad because sometimes people just snap, don't they? I had this teacher, <laughs> yeah. I had this teacher at school who used to get all this abuse, like really stuff like getting locked in cupboards and people thinking he wanked in his cupboard, which is yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. And just one day this girl just said, sir, you're gay. And he just snapped. <laughs> it was just like the last straw. He actually got up, ran around the classroom, and, oh, that's right, isn't it? I'm gay, aren't you? Why don't you get your big wooden spoon and give it a big stir? And he was actually what? stirring He's his imaginary me. big wooden spoon. He had, like, veins bulging out of his neck, just screaming at the whole class. And it was hysterical Oi. and kind of tragic at the same time and yeah, yeah sometimes it just takes Oi. but at the time you're like straw. but at the time you're like this is brilliant yeah. but looking back at it now it's actually quite upsetting yeah it's yeah. quite tragic because there was a guy he, he, he was he used gay to, though, he used wasn't he used to write love songs <laughs> he used to write love songs he was like, gay you'd only have to you'd only have to be nice to him for two minutes to get him back on side and you can get him to sing them just openly laugh and he'd carry on. <laughs> so weird, isn't it? That sort of shit. <laughs> in, my, in my, like, technology class at school, there was this bloke um, who used to... Uh, I'm not going to say his name in case he kills me. <laughs> uh, he used to uh, run around the fucking class with a chisel. And he would actually try and get you with it. You'd be absolutely Just bricking. you. And he it? would attack... Chisel doing compli- it? No, it was in uh, technology. Oh, right, sorry. He would attack completely at random, completely without warning, and he once trapped our technology teacher, Mr. Gilbert's head, in the door. I thought you were going to say that vice. No. It's <laughs> not Joe Pesci. Joe Pesci. I got your head in the vice, Mr. Gilbert. No, it's not Joe Pesci, but it was almost as bad. He got, like, expelled in, like, year eight. He threw a chair. What was it with kids were throwing chairs? Yeah, that, um, well, what else are they Actually, that's the same girl that kicked off... He had um, a fucking chisel. The same girl... <laughs> we're going to throw that. It could hurt someone. Yeah. The same girl that kicked off that teacher going mental once. Just... 
She had such a hilarious attitude. She once just picked up a chair and accidentally, like, smashed this cooker to pieces. Just absolutely <laughs> smashed the front of it completely. And just went, well, my fault. Yeah. Put the chair down and walked out. It's yeah. Like, yeah. That's, that school's brilliant, that, yeah. that sort of shit. Yeah. It's amazing. Probably was their fault as well. Yeah. Didn't have a CCTV to prove it, though. But anyway. Back to where it Back to where it came to now. But, um... Yeah, just to sort of give you a quick list of some of the honours. I've, I've had the Eric Cantona miss before in the footy game. Maybe. I've been sat on for kicking someone. Maybe just yeah. completely like... You were trying to tackle them. Yeah, the red miss. You just boot someone. Mm. And you know, you know. Do you know what I mean? Straight away. That happens on pro evil. I've, I've had things. someone kick me as well. Like, out of the blue, off the ball, and be sent off. Really? I think it does happen to the best of us. And then Mr. Cantona is just, you know... Mr. Cantona. He, he's telling us, he's showing us, you know, what it's like to be... Mental. Human. And mental. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's, he's won, obviously, the French League um, and then the English Division 1. He won the Premier League for Man U, 93, 94, 96, 97. The only year they didn't win it when he was in the side was when he was banned. Banned, yeah. And they only just got pipped to that as well. He probably year. could have stayed on to the to the, the Champions League yeah. winners. Because he, what was he, 30 when he retired? He, he wasn't was, that yeah. old. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, he's still quite young, no? He's no, he can't have been 30. 30. He must be older than that. Was it no, he was 30. Was he, yeah? Yeah. Um, he, FA Cup. Do you, do you know much about his European record? Because I don't really remember it. What in what in Europe? For Man United, yeah. I, it, it was all right. It wasn't. It, I mean, they got to the semi final against Dortmund, I think. Yeah. And in, in, in his well, in the early year. part of his career, we would have been banned from European competition. I think I'm right in saying that. Yeah. So for Leeds, you, oh, we were less anyway. So yeah, I don't know. I'm yeah, not, I, I don't know. I think they were kind of caught as semis. A lot of people, know. a lot of people will say about Cantona that he did used to go missing in big games and sort of stuff. They say that about lots of players, yeah. but you know, you know that does that is something they sort of say about him as well. well yeah. I'm a bit too young to really know, but mm. I know he was a player. Do you know well, he I mean? was pl- PFA Player of the Year '94, and then Football Rights Player of the Year '96. How many cups did he win? Um, he won cups? two FA Cups, cups yeah, Man yeah. U, with Man U. Um, but he became the captain of the French national beach football team. That's yeah, right, yeah. And they he, won, and they won the beach soccer world championship in Rio. And he's currently the manager. Have you got anything about his acting career? Because he was in. Have you seen? There's a film he was in where he wears a fat suit. It's funny you say that because I do. He's in a period drama, isn't he? Elizabeth II or something like that. That's, that's right. Yeah. No, oh, another the second. Elizabeth the first one. Another another funny Cantona moment was um, he was on a French a French football TV show. And there was a couple of French journalists as guests as well as Cantona on the show. And they were, the, the French journalists were slagging off English journalists. And Cantona turned around and went, Oi, but they recognised my brilliance. In France, you did nothing. You kicked me out. And he went mental. Did he? And Cantona just went, just get out. That's and amazing. He, and he wouldn't continue talking until these two French journalists had left the studio. He loves it. And they left. It's got, you're big time, you sit there. Yeah, but they recognise my brilliance. <laughs> That's the sort of thing I would say. But the fans still... He was voted greatest Man United player of last century. It's good, isn't it? That is incredible. And, and the he's fans... He's talked of wanting to manage Man United, hasn't the he? The fans still sing his name. Yeah, he, yeah, he seems to want to invent but a new fans, kind of football, doesn't he? That's yeah. what he keeps talking the about. The fans still sing his name. put sand all over the pitch. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The fans still uh, sing well, his name. Well, rightly so. And he said a couple of years ago, he said, I'm so so proud the fans still sing my name, but I fear tomorrow they will stop. I fear because I love it. And everything you love, you fear you will lose. <laughs> oh, poetic. Yeah. He's, he's talking of like, because um, I remember him saying, giving an interview, I think it was in World Soccer or something like that. He said, yeah, I want to I manage Manchester United and my hat's, I want to put my hat in the ring for when Ferguson retires and stuff. And they were like, well, you never managed before properly and stuff. And he was like, well, the club is in my heart. I know what it takes to be a main United manager. Mm. I could get it. I, you know, I could do it. I just love to see it. Yeah. It would be brilliant. It would be even, brilliant. It would be amazing. Even if he came in as Ferguson's assistant. Like now, that would yeah, never that happen. Would be brilliant. No, exactly. no never. <laughs> yeah, Ferguson isn't mental. Well, do you remember really? talking about this the kung, these kung fu kick? After that happened, now Ferguson is well known for being a disciplinarian yeah. and absolutely hammering his players. Yeah, and 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 often that's that's kept them, you know, to a level. You know, yeah. the, the Man United players often aren't messing around as much as other clubs and so on off, off the pitch you could say. Yeah. Anyway, so Cantona after that happened, all the players were like, bloody hell, what's going to happen here? And he came in at, at like half time or full time. I can't remember when it was. I think it was half time. And he was like, "Right, come on, we have got to be doing this in the game." Because they were way to Palace, and they went one yeah. nil down. Yeah. And he just turned around, and all he said to Cantona was, "Eric, you can't do that, all right?" And he carried <laughs> on. <laughs> filmography. Oh yeah, please do. Yeah, boy. Um, this is what, the first. This is the first and probably only filmography we'll have. And a player profile. Are you suggesting Stan Collins is never going to play James Bond? What? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I am suggesting okay, that. Okay, yeah, yeah. all right. Mm, you've, you've, you've phased me a bit there, but I'll have, carry on. Have you heard? It's, it's, it's a tenuous football league. Collins did say that. But you will, listen, George Best's son, Callum Best, said that. If I keep my TV presence, I hold out, I'm holding out hope to be the next Bond or something. Like, you know. 
That's a silly idea. Yeah. Um, Cantona has starred in a few films. His first speaking role was in Elizabeth in 1998. Yeah, I've seen that. It, it, he's not even, well, I, I can't remember what the film was like, but I remember just pretty much watching it because Cantona was in it. And he's not that bad in it. It's not like, oh my god, he's awful. It's not mm. like. Um, no, he is quite well respected as an actor in what is he? he has done. Okay, right. Yeah, um, he didn't see. He didn't stand out as being shit. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. His, his starring role, role was in a film called, in English, The Overeater. And that was when uh, he donned a fat suit to play an overweight detective. And it won him praise from movie critics. That did. He also directed um, in 2002. Directed? A poire moi ton amour. Oh, very well done, mate. Well pronounced. I don't think so, but thank you anyway. Um. I don't know what it means. French. But, um, yeah, so he's, he's, you know, he's in the film. Not a string to his bow. Well, let me finish uh, today's profile. No. Okay. Well, Please do finish it. it. Yeah, yeah. Well, one thing I haven't said is, is French uh, scoring record. 45 games, 20 goals. Not bad. That's okay. Yeah, that's not bad yeah, at all. It's almost one in two. Which yeah, is oh, and, and of course, uh, I've got yeah, to give you the... Yeah, the yeah. I've, got, I've got to give you the Man United... to judge. I've got yeah. to give you the Man United stats. 184 appearances, 82 goals. That's all right, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, I would have thought he played more for France, but I know he had his ups and downs, so fair enough. Obviously, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. It's unlike a French player to fall out with the military. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And, and, and he, um, just keeping with that, the, the French national team, because he was excluded from the Euro 96 side, he, um, he basically turned his back on France completely and now supports England. He supports England <laughs> in Euro 2004. Yeah. Uh, well, I, saw I support England as well, so I can see yeah, where he's coming from. Yeah, yeah, maybe that's what him. I don't actually really support England, I'm English. Come on. That's another man. Come on. I don't want to anyway, you. let me finish the profile um, with a quote from, from the great man. And I couldn't have put it better myself. Whatever happens, there are always things you could have done better. You score two goals and you usually feel you could have done better. You score two goals and you usually feel you could have had the third. That's perfectionism. That's what makes you progress in life. Ladies and gentlemen, Eric Cantona. A worthy addition <laughs> to the Ramble Player Profile Hall of Fame. Yeah. Let's have a recap on, on who we've done. We've done Ronaldo. Yeah. We've done Romario. <laughs> yeah. We've done Dion Dublin and Dean Winder. Yeah, well, that yeah. was together. That was a low point. <laughs> <laughs> that was a low point. Come on, you said earlier you love Winder. I do, yeah. And you got to love Dion Dublin as well. Yeah. I mean, if he's in. If I, I mean, he was he was he was injured, so they got in Cantona. Yeah, but Windass <laughs> is. <laughs> <laughs> Windass is an illustrious company, yeah. <laughs> and Dublin, to be fair, at least he's played right. a game for his national team. Marco Van Basten. Yeah. And Eric Cantona. Cantona. Yeah. Who knows who's going to be next week? Who knows? Yeah. Suggest, write in, suggest. It could be. Actually, don't, because I like choosing It them. could be <laughs> Pele. It could be no, Neil fucking good. Redfern. It could be anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Oi, let me tell you something. It's not going to be Pele. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <fair enough. laughs>